Hey, what's going on there, folks? It is Earthmaster. May 11th, 2018, 7.34 p.m. here on the West Coast and uh, taking a look at a live stream of Yellowstone National Park. And Old Faithful Geyser there in the background along with some uh, other distant geysers. Uh, you can see the steam there in the, in the uh, background there. A bunch of folks out there observing uh, nature and uh, the beauty and uh, all the glory that uh, Yellowstone has to offer out there. It looks a little cold too. See quite a few people bundled up in some heavy jackets. Anyway, uh, covering the earthquake 3D globe right here shows uh, definitely a lot of activity continuing in the state of Hawaii. Uh, that's going along with the uh, eruption of Mount Kilauea, the volcano in uh, the big island there. It's been erupting here for uh, few days I guess. Uh, earthquake activity shows no sign of letting up. In fact, the activity itself seems to have increased in magnitude. Uh, not necessarily multitude or uh, yeah multitude but magnitude seems to be uh, picked up just a tad bit here. Uh, I'm gonna go in and take a look at the uh, one day magnitude 2.5 and above from the usgs.gov website uh, they're showing 54 earthquakes just today of a magnitude 2.5 and above and once again this is just off the coast of the island right there well it looks a little bit more inland today uh, yesterday we seen a little bit of activity just off the coast here along this uh, area that I'm going to discuss here in just a minute that's uh, causing uh, some, some type of concern out there. Uh, a lot of people uh, throwing uh, some ideas out. I'll cover that here in just a second. But uh, as far as the earthquake activity goes, take a look at the magnitudes here. Most of them two pointers. Uh, a couple threes coming in there. I believe we did have a four as well earlier today. Um, well, where'd she go? Maybe it was yesterday. I could have swore I seen a four, unless they dropped it to a uh, lower magnitude. But uh, interesting there. Let's go ahead and take it back uh, to the all magnitudes map here, real quick. One day, all magnitudes goes from uh, what 54 to 118 earthquakes just today of all magnitudes. Uh, you know, so uh, maybe I was wrong about the uh, magnitude level right there. I could have swore I seen a couple more threes and also a four in there as well on the earthquake 3D globe but that's possible that we're seeing that from uh, maybe yesterday I guess or before midnight. I don't know the live stream was down for a while and I had some computer issues and the internet was all over the place. It's just been a pretty windy day here in Northern California. Uh, just 55 almost 60 mile per hour winds consistent um, throughout the day and it's still pretty windy out there tonight but not as bad not affecting my internet everything looks pretty good so uh, yeah but anyway um, 118 earthquakes just today that's pretty good multitude of them another one just popped up it looks like there 2.5 uh, a lot of activity still occurring within the East Rift zone over here bubbling up quite a bit of uh, low magnitude earthquakes also around the crater itself they're showing uh, no sign of letting up this here is the rim the crater the lava lake area uh, definitely quite a bit of activity within that rim area as well um, it's just it's covering a large portion of the coast over here so to speak here and there's a little area uh, that has me interested in in something I read today and maybe a few of you folks read it maybe a few not but uh, this here is just a blog uh, seismo uh, Berkeley dot education website here seismology lab and uh, it looks pretty legit uh, it doesn't look like any type of just fake web page, any type of you know fear-mongering type deal. Uh, 
otherwise I would not be showing it on here you know it looks like a decent level-headed team of, of people there anyway it's a pretty cool interesting scary blog at the same time there um, like I say I did post this on my Facebook page but I will go through a few things here and point out uh, their worry about a uh, an area that could fall off into the ocean uh, part of the land part of the land mass uh, equivalent to about 10 percent of volume of the mat of the land itself and uh, that goes down a little bit to explain uh, more about this area so you know they're talking about the slow um, lava coming up you know how it's uh, kind of like a slow emergency you know you have time to get out of your house and, and pack up your things as the lava slowly creeps in at you know less than half a mile per hour I don't know what it is exactly but uh, they're talking about the southern coast which is all this region where we're seeing the earthquake activity right I can take this back to the last seven days and it would probably fry my computer because there's so many of them probably not but you get the word right you get the the picture here there's a large number of earthquakes that have taken place within this area that they're talking about here this uh, what's it called the southern coast is dominated by a steep cliff called uh, Pali or Palai in Hawaiian and it goes down to talk about this right here it says while the earthquakes under the summit and under the eruption center at the eastern end of the rift zone are generated by the movement of magma the big event and its aftershocks you're talking about 6.9 here right that 6.9 here uh, a few days ago when uh, it struck I pretty much thought it was purely volcanic in nature there but they're say they're stating otherwise here the big event, which is at 6.9, and its aftershocks under the Pali, which is that area here towards the south of the island, have a different origin. This becomes obvious in figure 2. It shows how the permanent GPS stations installed and operated by the Hawaii Volcano Observatory moved in response to the 6.9 earthquake. The red arrows over here indicate the direction of horizontal motion and all the all of them point towards the southeast the length of each arrow represents the extent of the motion with the longest ones having moved by more than two feet okay so this area of land mass is this uh pally or whatever it's called uh, moved about two feet closer to the ocean here or away from the land towards the ocean and it's been confirmed by gps movements um, here it says this shows that the flank of the cliff on the southern coast of Hawaii has moved further towards the ocean now once again that's this region uh, right over here goes on to state this motion this type of motion is not new it actually has a name it is called of course they got to make it difficult for me the Helani slump <coughs> I think I pronounced that right Yay, Hilani. During the last strong quake in Hawaii, a magnitude 7.2 event on November 29, 1975, this slump slid toward the ocean by about 11 feet. Okay, that's pretty good distance there. Another trembler, the 7.9 magnitude, uh, back in 1968, caused the slump to move as well, resulting in a tsunami with a maximum wave height of 60 feet. With all respect for the people who are being affected by the current eruption, the way Kilauea, Kilauea lava comes to the surface is rather tame. It, all, it crawls slowly along the ground, this is what I'm talking about, and one can easily outpace it at, at a leisurely walk. In this sense, the ongoing eruption is slowly developing, is a slowly developing emergency, which gives people enough time to react and ultimately take shelter, right? A complete failure of this cliff that has moved two feet with that 6.9 
and ultimately has moved in the past with other large earthquakes. A complete failure of the cliff at the southern side of Hawaii along the extensional Helena, Helena fault system, however, would generate a huge sudden disaster. It is estimated that about 10% of the island's total volume could be affected by the collapse. The huge slide could generate a magnitude 9 earthquake, which is comparable to the largest earthquakes ever measured. It would also generate a mega tsunami with an estimated wave height of more than 1,000 feet throughout the islands. Geologic records show that about well, over 100,000 years ago, long before any of the adventurous Polynesian seafarers uh, had reached the island chain, Hawaii was rocked by such a slump and engulfed the resulting huge tsunami. So they're, st <clears throat> they're stating this scenario for us and things are backing up their scenario, how the island has moved. Uh, it's moved two feet with that 6.9 earthquake that they had a few days ago by GPS movement uh, sensors, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of scary to think about this, that it could happen. That the continuance of earthquakes here um, in this region could cause that collapse of the cliff, so to speak. 10% volume of this um, Hawaii, of the island here, the big island, falling into the ocean, ultimately resulting in possibly up to a thousand foot wave. But... You know, is that wave, if it does happen, is that going to bounce back this direction? Or is it simply going to go out into the Pacific Ocean and ultimately at this angle, uh, you know, po possibly hit the West Coast and ultimately Chile region and down through uh, the South Pacific Ocean? I guess it's happened in the past. The geological records have shown that quite a long time ago. Um, you know, why it hasn't happened uh, more recent times I don't know but you know it's a scenario that they painted that could possibly come true let's hope it doesn't because that would be a worst case scenario for uh, everyone I think but uh, you know the activity has not calmed down there's been a, you know simply 120 earthquakes just today and um, you know just for the heck of it let's go ahead and watch my computer start smoking and shuts the live stream down probably not but let's go seven days all magnitudes and here we go So here we're seeing roughly, wow, yeah, my, it may, oh no, I didn't mess up the computer. Uh, roughly, I can get that off there, 1,176 earthquakes in the last seven days. It's quite a bit of activity, folks, and you notice right there along that edge, right there along that cliff, right there along the, uh, what's it called, the pally? sure I'm pronouncing that right and not disrespecting any uh, uh, names for this pally the cliff area right here you can see it well defined right but then again we did have a lot of lava coming up there through the estates region and over there towards the East Rift zone uh, it's just you know it's hard to say what's going to happen, folks. That's why it's good to check on this periodically throughout the day, uh, see if there's any been any type of uh, uh, you know change. You know, now once again, this is just the past seven days here. Um, we could, because I don't think this shows the large 6.9 or any earthquakes that happened prior to that 6.9. Right? There was definitely a large in increase in earthquake activity prior to the 6.9. So, let's go ahead and do the 
ultimate ultimate uh, well you know what they're not gonna let me hunt they don't have the 30 day all day uh, or uh, all magnitude earthquakes we can do the 30 days magnitude 2.5 and above but we're not gonna see that significant number of earthquakes that have happened including all the smaller ones this one here 627 earthquakes uh, this one also shows the uh, 6.9 that struck right off the coast, uh, you know, possibly within an, in that area where, uh, you know, that could cause this cliff, this island to collapse into the Pacific. Uh, I don't know exactly how that works, but uh, it's happened before and uh, it's not, uh, it's not good. But that's where the 6.9 struck, right in that area where, uh, you know, we could see like an undermine of that mountain or that cliff, so to speak. And, um, yeah, gosh, I wish I could go back 30 days all magnitudes, but I don't think, I don't think there's an option here on this specific website. But uh, nonetheless, folks, definitely a lot of activity. Uh, it's it's definitely continuing but I did want to share with you guys this little uh, information from the seismo seismology lab here Berkeley California uh, dated May 7th 2018 which was obviously a few days ago go check it out that's the uh, link up here also, I think if you type into uh, any search browser and just type in uh, Seismo blog, a slow emergency and sudden slump, it will probably come up in the search results there. So yeah, definitely uh, interesting, folks. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it, and we'll definitely update everyone, and uh, keep an eye on these live seismic seismographs here. Uh, ultimately, this here will pick up any type of large earthquake before it, uh, the USGS even attempts to put it out. Real quick, California, Nevada, nothing really to talk about, folks. Pretty quiet, pretty mellow, just a couple little small creeper earthquakes along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault Zone. Um, earthquake 3D globe. A uh, little bit of activity uh, over here. Quite a few twos there in this region of the world. That's not Alaska unless Alaska has uh, moved over there <laughs> in that region. Central Turkey, a little bit of activity. Not seeing any new deep movement today. Uh, looks like some renewed activity up there near uh, the uh, Japan region. Other than that, um, not a whole lot of interesting earthquake activity uh, far as the norm goes. And uh, yeah. So anyway, folks, uh, the live stream is back up and running. Uh, like I say, it was down all day today, unfortunately, because of the high winds. Everything should be back to normal now. I'll go ahead and keep up the live Yellowstone webcam, uh, just because I don't want to have too many issues with the uh, Kilauea Volcano webcam there. So, All right, folks, um, I will get some music back up and running here in a few minutes. In the meantime, uh, you'll hear a little bit of silence, but... Uh, We'll kick back the music here in just a tad bit. Have a good night, folks. <laughs>